Hello guys and welcome back to a vlog. It has been a while since I've been talking to you while in London. Obviously had those blissful two weeks in Italy which was so amazing. And I'm back into the vlogging mojo in London. I'm going to Amsterdam tonight so this isn't going to be very London based for very long but I just thought I'd vlog through the weekend and show you guys what we get up to and all that good stuff. Um, currently packing, currently doing some washing, currently the flat is like a small bomb's gone off. There's also scaffolding on the building because they're painting it so the whole place just feels like someone's come and turned it upside down um, so I'm quite glad to be getting away for the weekend if I'm honest uh, but equally I had a night in last night that was pure bliss I finished my book I've been reading Sapiens um, which literally I think is subtitled A Brief History of Humankind and um, I really enjoyed it. it took me a while to get through because it isn't like a page turner in the sense that like, oh I need to know what happens next and the chapters are relatively short, which can be a blessing and a curse because I find a book easy to put down sometimes when it's like that. But it has been hugely interesting and hugely formative. Definitely drops off in the middle part. There was a whole section on religion, which I found really hard to, um, to get through and just to keep engaged with. But then it really picks up again towards the end. So overall, it is a book that I would recommend. And the next book I've got to read, which I'm really excited about, is this one called um, Between the World and Me, I'm going to say this name wrong, by Ta-Nehisi Coates. I don't know if I've said that right or wrong. Um, I'm really into like essay books at the moment and non-fiction things, so really, really, really looking forward to reading this. And while I'm trying to read slightly more heavy and intellectual things, the child in me is always thrilled when you open a book and you see it's kind of got a lot of lot of big nice words spread out on a page I honestly you know that makes me sound like such a kid and I think it's something from like reading books when you're at uni in school when you open a book a bit like this one which is on my list as well and the words are quite small and fill the width of the page I'm like oh oh when I open this one I'm like ah please tell me it's not only me that does this <laughs> Oh, this is the other one that I ordered to read as well, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this one first. One, two, three. And then I know this is part of a trilogy, or maybe it's four. Uh, book one. Book one of what, though? One of what? Um, but I think, from what people have said, I don't think you need to read them back to back, as you maybe would need to. The Harry Potter novels, really don't think that was a strong comparison between the two. So. Um, let me know if that's wrong, but I'm thinking to go one, two, three. Um, also, this is a new camera. I bought the same camera that I already have, just because this is my bread and butter, this camera. Like, this is what I create nearly all of my content on for my blog, lots of my Instagram. So it really is the cornerstone of my business, that and my phone. And it's kind of on its way out. I use it very heavily, like you can see it's scratched. And I need to use it that way to get the content that I want. Like, I have to have it on my body all the time. Not always have a lens cap on. These are small things that I think if people shoot a lot of pictures, they might relate to. Of that, sometimes if a camera's in your bag, wrapped up in a load of things, in a case with a lens cap on, you just often miss pictures. Whereas if it's on your person, you literally just have to grab it from your chest and take the picture. It's so good for shooting on the go. And it really helps me, like, work the most creatively and the most efficiently too. Um, and I'm sure that, you know, it's been heavily used and it isn't breaking or anything, but it needs a service, which I think means they go away for quite a long time. I always, always order, always order my cameras from West Yorkshire Cameras in Leeds. They're the best, the absolute best. And I'm going to send this back to him so he can service it for me. Um, but I did think I ought to have two anyway, because, you know, you're running a business and so it's important to always have a backup for things um, and to take things like this really seriously. But I just, it's the best film camera I've ever had. It's the Context G2, if anyone's wondering. Um, so I have the 45mm lens on it. I also have the 90mm lens, which I very rarely use. And then with this one, this has come with a 35 and a 28mm, which I'm so excited about. So I'm going to... I'm going to take the old one to Amsterdam this weekend because um, I'm going to keep using this until I organise getting it sent off and keep this one as good as new like it looks now. But I think I might take, I might even take the 28mm lens. I'm going to see what it looks like, but it's basically just um, a wider lens, the lower the number is. It's a very crude way of explaining it. But yeah, if, I get lots of questions about which film camera I use and it's the Contax G2. Hugely pricey, they're not cheap cameras, but my God, this is a workhorse. Like I said, it's been heavily used, used it nearly every single day. I have it with me nearly every single day. Um, it's holding up so, so, so well. They're just 
brilliant, brilliant, brilliant cameras. Um, and yeah, I'm very excited to have two, but I'm going to really keep this one safe until it needs to swing into the wings and save the day in a certain moment with work when this all goes tits up. Stay at home, so now I need to explain we're in Amsterdam now. Oh, so you need to say we're an answer. We're an answer. <laughs> <laughs> Ben's holding the camera. What are you wearing today? Today I'm wearing church's robes, um, faithful linen trousers, mm. getting these up white from holidays, um, a cardigan from Uniqlo, mm. Ray Ban sunglasses, contacts camera, and then my your bag actually for my earrings and these are my Fedoma ones. What is that they? Oh, they're nice. I wear these every day. I like those ones. They're better than the bleeding gold ear ones yeah, that you like. Yeah, I don't like those ones. You like a hoop more. Mm. Um, so today we're going to go round some vintage shops. What I'm, are you looking for in these shops? I'm looking for specifically some white shorts, which this is so specific. I want white shorts that are like cotton fabric like thick cotton and they can be men's ones and i'll get them taken in how thick you know you know that benetton top that i had on when we were away oh yeah, yeah, yeah. you gotcha. know exactly what i mean gotcha. now. Yeah. so like really 80s sports shorts yeah but preferably without a drawstring waist oh i like the drawstring <sighs> yeah all right that, that's the brief or is there yeah. other things and um just anything else that we see that could be holiday -ish, but i wanted to make a feature about it, of what you can find in the vintage shops that is available in the shops at the moment, so that people also have the option to buy new ones but could see what were in vintage shops. But I wanted to try and get pieces that were in lots of vintage shops, not just really specific ones. Right. That makes sense. Like, not like a unique item that you're only going to find in like in the Bratislava. Really well curated, yeah. yeah. Vintage shops are like people go to their own hometown and possibly find something similar. Cool. That's the plan. All right. Should we get into it? Let's go. Thank you. Uh, anything that has like on um, a real bold undercoat. Oh, Madam Secretary. The difference in having one you know is like sexy bold start to librarian. You put them up, you know. Go these ones. Yeah. Oh, I'd go. I'd go you. Wouldn't go you. <laughs> Really? These are identical. They are. They're, exactly the same. They're not living, but like they look the same on. That is nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 These are a no. These are a no. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to let you go to one more shop. Alright. Then you'll be free from this. Still need to try and get the white shorts. You didn't get, you didn't find the ones in the size you wanted? No, they were too big. Okay. And not quite the right material. Alright. But not far off it. Do you know where the second shop is? No, it's on a corner which doesn't help. Good. Right. Corner. We'll find a corner. It's on the nine street. Oh, you use right away? Yeah, man. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, oh, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> fresh iced. Fresh iced. Oh, I got one of those. Iced. 
Dank je wel. Can I have the same, please? Do Sorry, me. thank you. <laughs> That's so good. Ben just had a big downward spiral. I needed food in my tum. Mm. My tummy. This Riley just got an unconventional breakfast. It was a state of emergency. I liked it how you were like, let's get a green smoothie. Which I've never heard you say before, ever. And now I'm having a ham and cheese sandwich for breakfast. Oh god. <laughs> so good. Mm. Too short or okay? Uh, I don't know. Keep put. No, I think it's okay. It's because it flares out, so it sticks off my bum. That makes sense. Yeah. It's At the back. Because it flares yeah. off my bum. I like that though. With a with a white shirt on holiday. Yeah. <sighs> Perfect. Mm -hmm. Hello, guys. Um, it. So what day are we on? Monday at 14.38. I'm back in London now, as you can see. The corner of my mouth has just been bleeding where I've had this cold sore, so if it looks a bit blech, that's why. But just make sure it's not really gross. Oh no, that's not so bad. Um, yeah, I'm back in London now. Such a nice weekend, I'm so, so chilled. And I've come back to London uh, for, um, I go away again tomorrow, basically. I'm going to Italy tomorrow, to just outside Bologna with a fragrance brand. Um, which I'll be doing a blog post about, so you'll be able to catch up all that on there. Um, and I'm, I'm going to share my outfits when I'm there with you guys, I think. And just do like a week in outfits when there's some really consistent summer weather too. Um, I'm quite enjoying filming those week in outfit videos and I hope that you are enjoying them too. Um, and it kind of made me thinking about it. Um, sorry if you can hear lots of shouting outside. Um, thinking about that in particular, maybe we want to have a bit of a chat about content anyway. Um, just in terms of where I wanted to sit on both my, my blog and on here, of finding a really good balance between, this is, fashion is always the thing that I'm most interested in sharing, but I increasingly wanted the fashion that I'm sharing to be what I am always wearing and pieces that I'm wearing all the time, which has always been the emphasis, but back when I was in Manchester and I used to do one vlog a week and one fashion video a week, I was shopping so much more than I do now. Lots of the videos were hauls. Yes, lots of them were styling videos, but there always tended to be new stuff in there. And I feel like now I'm at a point, and maybe it just comes with being older, where I want to share those the styling tips with you, but with what I'm actually wearing, not just pulling together loads of outfits from my wardrobe all the time, which then makes you feel tired of your wardrobe in a different way. Because what I found with that is that I wasn't wearing the outfits that I was sharing with you, but because I'd shared them and I felt like I had worn them almost, so then everything constantly felt old and I just have re-evaluated the way that I'm interacting with my own wardrobe anyway through the past two years. So I want, I will always share fashion content and like share my outfits of what I'm actually wearing, which is why I'm enjoying the weekend outfits because it makes you talk through the clothes more thoughtfully of like, why am I re-wearing this piece? Why are some pieces not being worn as much even though I thought they would be worn more? And I think it is the most the most important way in some ways to talk about sustainability at the moment because it's an actual day-to-day -day lifestyle decision with fashion and it's not finger wagging and being like don't go shopping anymore because there is so many positive things within shopping and retail therapy and I love how having a new piece of, piece of clothing in your wardrobe can make you feel and that's all great and I don't ever want to discredit those feelings um, but it's about 
making it part of your lifestyle to not um, search for that feeling as often through consuming more and more and more clothes. Um, so for me, this is something which is part of my life. Like I still get sent lots of stuff and I'm getting increasingly picky with how much I will even accept of that. Just so that you guys see the pieces that I'm wearing all the time, really regularly. And it is injected with new items every now and then. Um, and items that I'm excited about, but it does make it harder to create fashion content in the way that I once was that isn't really obviously repetitive in a way that I actually don't know how much you would enjoy it when it isn't showing you that I'm actually wearing it day to day as opposed to just pulling loads of looks together. I hope this makes sense in some way. Um, testing basics not, isn't going anywhere. I still love doing it. I think I'm going to do denim skirts next. I've just been having a look online at some and working out the price points of them all and things. Um, and I think that would be a good one to do while I'm in London next week because you can kind of make them work for slightly more cold weather outfits if we have some cool days. So that's my plan for testing basics. Do let me know if you're happy with that. Um, but yeah, I was kind of, I had just a few comments across different platforms that made me want to sort of address this that I also want people to remember that my content will always share where I'm at in my life at any given point. With regards to all sorts of different things, relationships probably the most obvious one and the travel that I'm doing and how that's influenced by the people around you and it is always a true reflection of what I'm doing at the moment in my life. This is what my vlogs always have been and through that is the true reflection of the clothes that I'm enjoying and I think lots of you will know what my favourite pieces in my wardrobe are because you see them so often and I really want to maintain that focus and create fashion content but that is just also thoughtful and isn't just promoting shopping for, any, for, for no good reason but also negatively impacting the way that I think I need to behave sustainably and the lifestyle I want to promote through that. Um, and like I'm saying, I still get sent so much stuff. I, my lifestyle is still, in terms of fashion consumption, is still not sustainable, which is the negative side of this job, which makes it hypocritical to have these conversations at times um, and really difficult to broach. But and, and this whole shift in my content isn't just with sustainability in mind. It's just genuinely, I think, getting a bit older and changing with that and... What I want to share, changing a little bit, and I want the fashion content to be there, and I want it to be informative for you guys, and you to leave feeling like you've got good, honest reviews, as always, and feel inspired by what you're seeing, but just trying to find a way that feels like it's always relevant and authentic to where I am in my life as well, which is why then sharing my lifestyle alongside it is a really great way to do it, because you guys see what I'm wearing like you it, it's just so much more transparent and see what I actually how I style things in a genuine day-to-day -day way um so yeah I just felt a bit of an urge to address it just because I'd had I'm really used to getting negative comments and honestly I'm so thick-skinned with it not to blow my own trumpet I really 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 am like I don't think I've ever been to made made to cry over a YouTube comment or anything like that um, and I really appreciate it when it's really positive feedback, like when you guys tell me how you're finding the camera quality or when you guys tell me the content that you're missing and what you want to see, it's really, really, really helpful and I promise I listen and things like how I know the lighting and, the, and my mirrors in my flat aren't great and so I'm trying to if I'm show an outfit when I'm not in a rush to, to move things around, like I, I'm listening to it and I'm always doing my best to improve. Um, but there'd just been some comments recently that had sort of got to me a little bit in questioning things like work ethic and just that the content isn't what it once was. But I think anybody who is also going through their 20s, and imagine sharing that online, you are not going to be the same person with the same interests in the exact same way as you were in your early 20s as to your mid 20s as to your late 20s as to your early 30s and so on and so forth and what's amazing about content create, creation like this is that you can share that path and it's completely you you as an audience it's your prerogative to who you want to pick up at different points and who you don't you know doesn't resonate with as much anymore and take it and leave it as it comes but i wanted to just 
make sure that my focus was clear on the content that I want to create. I want it to be enjoyable. I want you guys to switch off to it and just feel like you're catching up with a friend because I feel like I'm catching up with my friends when I'm talking to you guys. And that's why I want to share my life with you and share personal parts of my life because this is a huge community that I have built that I'm so proud of and love so much. And that's also sometimes certain comments that question question my content deeply is, is the comments that get to me the most because then I question it and think, okay, mate, I have to address this and see where everyone is at with what they what I'm creating and if it's what they want to see and also to reiterate how I'm feeling about the content I'm creating and my motivation behind it basically. So that was a long ramble and I hope not too boring. Um, it was just, yeah, I just really wanted to talk about it basically. And fashion content is always gonna be my focus. My Instagram is literally nothing but photos of outfits. So if you're ever feeling like you're not seeing enough on here, please go follow me on there. I do share so much in my blog of what I'm doing and what I'm wearing. I'm trying to show you guys as much as possible on here too. And I will keep creating fashion content, but I just need to do it in a way that feels right for me. Um, and a way that isn't just reliant on new clothes. And at the moment, as I'm getting to grips with that more and more, the most authentic way of doing that to me has felt like to show you what I'm wearing day to day, what I'm actually wearing, how I'm actually styling things. It just seems so much more relatable above all else. Um, but anyway, speaking of that, I'm just waiting for Isaac, the photographer, to get here so that we can shoot today. In fact, is that him outside? No, no. Um, so that we can shoot, so I can shoot some bits before I go off to Italy again. Um, I finished that book that I was reading there, uh, Between the World and Me. Between the World and Me? Between, what was it called? One second, let me just check my Goodreads. Um, between, come on. It was called Between the World and Me, that was right, by Tahnehisi Coates. I really, really, really enjoyed it. It was a really thought-provoking read. Um, I would really recommend it. I read it over the flight to and from Amsterdam, so in like an hour and a half total, because it's really not that long, but it was still a relatively slow read because I was having to think quite a lot as I was reading it, but I really, really, really enjoyed it. And now I'm going to start reading the, um, My Brilliant Friend, which I'll start tonight, but mostly wanted to be reading when I was in Italy because... Um, the main feedback that I've heard from that book is that you should read it when you're in Italy, if you can, because it evokes the Italian culture and just Italy so, so well. So I'm very excited about that. Um, and yeah, like I said, just waiting for Isaac to get here before getting on with some stuff. And then I'm going to catch up with you guys again a bit later. But yeah, I just wanted to have a bit of a chat about, about all of that, which I just spoke to you about. <laughs> Hello guys, it's the following morning and I'm just on the old vlog camera because I wanted to do a bit of a skincare update and it's a lot easier for me to do if I can see myself on the flip screen than it is with the GoPro. Um, I go to Italy this afternoon so I've just been organising myself all morning. Just went to the tailors, I dropped off, um, you know this Everlane dress that I've shown in a couple of videos, it's a linen one from quite a while ago with buttons down the front and the little collar. Well, it was a midi dress and it was just putting me off wearing it because I don't know, I just really struggle styling midi dresses. But I really wanted a really good button down black dress and I thought, you know what, this is perfect, it's just too long. So I'm gonna go and get it taken up. I'm worried I've had it taken up too much because it looks tiny, which I always make these sort of mistakes. Um, so I just picked that up, it was like 15 pounds to get it taken up and I thought that was way better to make the perfect dress that I actually wanted, even though you guys can't go and buy it yourself, um, which is the only downside to doing stuff like that. But um, yeah, I'm gonna try that on and put it into the suitcase. But yes, skincare, it's been a while since we talked about it. So I stripped everything back, just a quick recap, stripped everything back so I was just cleansing once at night, using a, a Embrylease moisturizer, really plain, in the morning, splashing my face with water, and then using SPF in a moisturizer, and that was it, which I've probably done for the past four or five weeks now. On holiday, obviously, I was wearing quite a bit more sun cream, but the sun cream didn't break me out or anything, and generally, my skin has been feeling so much less congest congested ignore the cold sore and there is the odd spot down here i'm currently on my period so lots of it might be hormonal there's the odd one here and stuff but overall the texture of my skin feels so 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 much better 
um, it's definitely been the, the best decision to have really stripped this back. So now I'm going to start slowly adding things, partly so that I can work out what works for me and recommend it to you guys. But I honestly, part of me thinks this is maybe what works best for my skin at the moment, using barely anything. So I'm going to start adding things in, but if they have any adverse effects, I think I'll just strip it back. And first thing I've been using, let me just go get it. It's also from PCA, which is the brand that stocked at the place where I went and got the facial, which sort of inspired all of this, which is called Skinworks. The brand's called PCA. Um, let me just balance you on a hand cream. Perfectly done. It is this, the Jewel Action Redness Relief. Now I've got things like vitamin C serum and retinol, retinols that I want to add in, but there's still the main complaint I have about my skin is the redness on and around my nose. I have got some makeup on now, which is why it doesn't look so bad, but I think you, you guys have seen me without makeup loads of times. It's always where I get the most redness. So I thought for the first product, initially I thought I was going to add a retinol, but then I thought, no, I'm going to use something that is literally prescribed for redness to see if it works. I've been using it for about a week and I think it's making a difference. And then I have to keep a close eye on it and filming myself in this helps me keep an eye on it because then when I edit and watch back through it, I'm like, I can judge it better if it is making a difference. So I'll make sure to show you without makeup on soon, but I think it might be helping, which is really exciting. Uh, it's an expensive skincare brand. I can't remember how much this was in particular because I bought three things at once, but the three things came to over £200. So it's definitely an expensive skincare brand, so I'm going to keep testing it and see if this works but yeah so far so good with all the with all the skincare updates i'm really pleased with it um there was some drilling going on in here but it seems to have stopped so i'm gonna sit and talk to you guys here for a bit suitcase all down here almost ready to go um oh yeah there's a man on the scaffolding out there we're a bit blue oh we're still a bit blue it's clearly not going to go not that blue um another thing i want to talk to you about very briefly was lots of you noticed that my watch was um no longer here the one that i wear is my dad's watch um and it was off to be serviced i've talked about this already and it came at the most serendipitous timing that tag here got in touch and said we want to work on a project with you um, and i went back immediately and said oh i have a big history with the brand could we talk about this angle and they said absolutely but we are promoting the women's watches and we'd love to let's just leave here um, and we'd love to, for you to wear one of those. So I said, oh, yeah, that's perfect. I'd love to. I'm so honoured to work with the brand. Um, and I haven't got my watch at the moment, so this is perfect timing. But like, I've made it clear to them that going forward, it'll still mostly be wearing the one that's my dad's. But I just wanted to talk about it. It's so This bit's not sponsored. It was just Instagram content. But just to, just to explain why, if any of you eagle-eyed people, and you are eagle-eyed, notice the watch was a different watch to usual that's the reason why but i'm so excited about it i'm not going to have my watch back for another three or four weeks probably um, but it's one of those projects that i was like oh this is so amazing to have been asked to do this with such an amazing brand and with the story behind it and one of those moments where i thought dad would be so proud of this because he would never have imagined that he wore tags for years like mum wears one of his old old ones um, he would never have imagined that I would end up working with them in this capacity because, well, partly because when he passed away, what I do for a job wasn't even a career back then. So, yeah, I was really, 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 really chuffed with it. And I'm really enjoying this watch. It has made me realise how big the one that I normally wear is, which I think mine's like 42 um, millimetre face. Like, it's a really, really, really big watch. So, I'm really liking this one and um, it's perfect to keep me going until mine's back but yeah I just wanted to mention that because you guys have even noticed that I didn't have my watch on and stuff you noticed so much which is amazing but um yeah I thought I'd better offer an explanation up for that one um I've been watching some Love Island in the background this morning also I'm gonna stop rambling soon uh watch Chernobyl I feel like lots of people talked about how good it was nobody told you that it could leave you with some like mental scarring from watching it it was absolutely brilliant but it was heavy and hard to watch like there's so many points in it when I was like, oh my god, this is really, like, I'm finding it really hard to keep watching this. But it was brilliant and so informative, and I really enjoyed it because it's such recent history. It's so interesting, so there's so much that you can then go read about it online, which I feel like so many people have been Googling Chernobyl after having um, watched it. And now I'm going to live my life eternally paranoid about radiation poisoning or something. Oh, but it's brilliant. I do recommend it, but definitely interspersed with some more violence so it doesn't get too heavy. Um, now I've finished rambling to you all, 
I'm gonna have to love you and leave you because I need to crack on and get ready and get this vlog edited so it's up for tomorrow. Um, and yes, thank you so, so, so much for watching. For those of you who entered in the giveaway as well in the last videos, which was so many of you, so thank you so much. People are gonna be contacted this weekend, whoever the winner will be contacted this weekend. So keep an eye on your Instagram. Um, I've got my Fedoma earrings in today as well. Um, yeah, I really liked that video and you guys really liked it too, so that was very good. Anyway, I digress. I'll see you in the next one.